Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Brushes and Bunnies, and in this video I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to take your sketch to the next level. You're probably already familiar with what a sketch is, and sketches can be anything in between a quick doodle or something that's very complex that involves lots of shading. If you're anything like me, you might be seeing sketching as a thing that you need to do in order to improve. To be honest, I never really saw it as a finished work of art. I always considered a oil painting or an acrylic painting to be like a complete work of art. Sketching was just one of those things that I thought was a quick doodle in my sketchbook. But as my style developed and as I got better at it, I realized and I saw the beauty in sketching. So in this video, I'm going to essentially give you some tips on what I do on how to basically take your sketch to the next level so that it looks like a finished work of art. Tip number one, select the correct paper. This is especially important if you're planning on selling your sketch as a final work of art. One thing to look for when you're buying paper is the weight of the paper. So I am a fan of anything that's above 100 pounds. It's just thicker, it looks better, and it's easier to frame, for example. In this case, I did buy the Hannah Muller sketch paper, which is the first time I buy it. It is 90 pounds, and this is actually the thinnest weight that I ever bought for sketch paper, but it is still actually quite good. Tip number two is about planning your layout before you start sketching. Now this is something that I only started doing very recently, up until probably two months ago, I would say. I actually never really did plan out my overall layout, but as soon as I started doing this and I added a ruler into the whole entire planning process, things just got a lot better. A tip that I can definitely give you is to really use this ruler to your advantage. So plan out the space around your sketch, your drawing, like the white space, if there's going to be a frame. This is especially useful if you're planning on having a background and you want to have a white border around. Definitely use a ruler to measure this out. Another thing that I use the ruler for is just to get an accurate kind of assessment on where the center of the page is and how kind of like the space between the, the top um, kind of like the top of the sketch, the bottom of the sketch to see if it's equal. I just want to have a balanced sketch and I'm still working on this and I, I don't know, I think for this sketch I kind of messed up already too because I think I drew her a little bit too low, but the ruler would definitely put things into perspective for you and I would definitely recommend using one if you're planning on having a final work of art. Uh, the, the ruler will just help you kind of manage everything uh, properly. Tip number three is about the materials that you're using. I would highly recommend to invest in a set of pencils that have a various degree of hardness. So what I mean by harness is essentially the different grade swatches from 9H to 9B. So we're all familiar with pencils that are HB, for example. Well, essentially, I would suggest to invest in maybe a B, 2B, 3B, 4B, and also vice versa with the 2H, 3H, 4H, for example. So definitely get a box set of pencils that do offer these different degrees of hardness because you're going to definitely need them if you want to improve in your sketches in terms of the shadows and um, just working on the highlights and just the blendability of your sketch, you're definitely going to be using these different pencils. For myself and for my style, I tend to stick to only a couple of these different swatches. Um, I do use HB and B as the typical leads for uh, basically sketching in general, like the basic sketch. And then when I start to add more to the sketch, more darkness or shadows, I will then go straight to either 4B, 6B or 8B. I rarely use anything in the H category, um, for example, 2H or even 5H. I just don't touch the H's for some reason. I don't really know why. I only typically use the HB. Um, but yeah, that's just the style that I've developed for myself and it may not work for you um, and you may have to use all of them, for example. And that's just totally fine and that's just up to you and what you want to do. But I would definitely recommend investing in a proper set of pencils. Tip number four is all about going that extra mile and I know you guys are probably sick of me mentioning it all the time because I do this in like almost every video and all of my sketches but I do love to incorporate this gold or this shimmery effect around the sketch. I think it just adds another beautiful dimension to the actual sketch itself. It's very simple, it's very classy, and it's very shiny uh, which is something that I love so much. 
So basically anything will go with this. Um, you guys can find all these beautiful paints out there. I, for this one, I did use the Fine Tech Clearo. I believe it's Moon Gold or Pale Gold that I used for this. Um, I do also in the past use, or I do also use the Aqua Bronze um, Gold or Copper or Silver colors. And it's something, it's basically just watercolor paint that you can just add onto the paper. Now, this is another reason why you should have a thicker paper is because you're gonna be, if you're wanting to do this technique, you're gonna have to of course wet the paper and if it's thicker it will hold up better than thinner paper so this is another bonus to having like paper that's over 90 pounds thick for example and the last tip in this video is tip number five is to clean up that sketch take an eraser whether it's just a regular hard eraser or in this case I am using my kneadable eraser from Faber-Castell which is super fun to use and something I would definitely recommend just in general with your sketches is just really great to kind of make the lines a little bit duller if you want you can erase some of the lines without having to completely erase it um, so you can definitely uh, play around with that and it's just it's just a lot of fun but basically take your eraser and go around and erase all of the unwanted sketch lines. In this case, I am erasing the borderline that I added earlier in the video, so I'm just erasing all of that. I don't really need it anymore. If you are painting a background, let's say you're sketching or you want to have a full background, I would definitely recommend to erase these lines before you apply either paint or just sketch on top, uh, just because you don't want this kind of straight line going down your drawing. Uh, this is basically just guidelines uh, for, for you to know where to stop to draw or to paint, but if you're using watercolor and you, you accidentally paint on top of these lines you won't be able to erase them and they'll just kind of be there in the background so that's just something to think about uh, in the near future if you're planning on doing this something that I also do is I just go into the actual drawing itself and I erase any unwanted sketch lines whether it's on her shirt in her face around her hair I do keep a lot of these sketch marks because I do think it's really nice and it adds to the whole kind of eclectic feel of the composition or of the sketch itself but the lines I just don't like, I, I just get rid of it. Basically, make sure that the sketch is nice and clean, the paper is nice and white, and it is sellable and someone will want to buy it. That's basically everything for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope you got some good insights on basically the, the steps that I take to make a sellable piece of art with just sketch or just a sketch art or however you call it. Please comment down below, let me know if this has helped you or also provide any comments or sorry, tips I should say. Provide any tips that you may be doing in order to bring your sketch to the next level. I would love to read them and see maybe I can learn something from them too. That would be really awesome. If you're interested in seeing the real-time video of this illustration, it will be uploaded onto my Patreon. And of course, the link is available down below in the video description. If you're interested, I do post tutorials and also real-time videos and just helpful guides and just things to help you. And also have open critique moments or days where you guys can submit your drawings and I will openly critique them and offer you advice. So again, check out my Patreon if you're interested. And that's about everything. So I wish you guys have a lovely day. I hope you keep trying, never give up. Stay awesome and we will see each other next weekend. Bye.